We're talking about pedals today. So if you need a couple of tips on how to adjust yours, why don't you go grab it and then meet me back here. So the people have spoken. I've gotten quite a few comments and, um, and emails asking about tips on adjusting your pedal, especially since the last bass drum or kick drum tutorial that I popped up, how to kick like a boss. If you haven't seen that yet, make sure you check it out. I'll put it at the end of this video so you can go straight to it. But um, yeah, a lot of you have been curious about the settings on my pedal, how I adjust it to my playing. It's completely personal preference, man. First of all, just let me say that. Like, it's a personal sort of thing, how you adjust your pedal, because it all has to do with comfort level and how you play and, and all that kind of stuff. But I do believe, as with anything else, that there are smarter ways to do everything. So, um, most high-end pedals these days have probably more, um, more adjustments than necessary, I would say. And we'll get into those. This is my pedal. This is a Yamaha DFP 9500 double series. Um, really smooth, super quiet pedal. It's a direct drive, so there's no chain. Like there's a, there's a direct link there. Um, yeah, I love this pedal. I've been playing it for a couple of years. And you've been asking about, that's kind of fun. Um, you've been asking about how I adjust it, so let's get into what these adjustments are and how you could possibly set your pedal up to get the best performance out of it. So remember that each adjustment that you make on these pedals is moderately to severely going to affect the feel of the pedal. So, um, so let's get into each one. First thing is first, spring tension. The spring tension is probably the most important of the adjustments on the pedal. So the question is whether to go tight or whether to go loose. I've tried them both. I find that, um, well, first of all, we'll just say the tighter the spring tension is on the pedal, obviously the more, you know, the more sort of springier rebound you're going to get, which is cool, but the drawback to that is you really have to work to, um, to get that pedal happening. And if you're not used to it, like over time, you'll feel it down here because you really have to sort of work to control it. You get a lot of slap back when you get tons of spring tension on the pedal and stuff. So you just, you got to work harder to play the pedal, which I think is sort of counterproductive. Now a loose spring tension is really cool if you like to feel the weight of the beater, which is, I'm one of those drummers. Like I like to feel, I like to feel that momentum when I'm playing. And I find that when I have a loose tension, um, it just feels better. I mostly play groove and pocket and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, um, so I don't do a whole lot of tricks and, and stuff like that with the pedal. So I'm fine with having a looser tension on my spring. Now on higher end pedals, you also, you also have the option to adjust the beater angle. Actually, most mid-level pedals will have that adjustment too. You can adjust the beater angle so that at rest, it's sitting, you know, wherever you want it to sit. Um, and then you can also, with higher end pedals, adjust the actual footboard height. I'm going to make a suggestion to everyone out there. Don't even mess with the footboard height. I don't, I don't see much point in messing around with how high the actual pedal sits. Um, beater angle is a much more useful adjustment than footboard height. So if your pedal has that, I mean, you can try it out if you want. I suggest don't even bother messing with it. So there are really only two adjustments, regardless of how many adjustments, adjustment possibilities your pedal has. There's only two that you really need to be concerned with. 
to get the maximum performance out of your pedal, spring tension, and beater angle. All right, so let me show you how I have my pedal set up. First of all, we'll start with the spring tension. Um, I have my spring tension actually quite loose. So it's pretty, um, it's pretty super sensitive when I'm playing. And I have it backed, not all the way off, but I have it quite loose. And I can't remember where I, who I got this tip from, but um, I found that when I really started working on that whole, you know, being able to play singles and stuff, you would think that having a tighter, uh, a tighter spring tension would help with that. But I don't think it does. I didn't find it helped at all. This worked out better for me, that whole tapping thing that I was talking about in the last video. That started working out way better for me when I backed the tension like way off. So it's fairly loose, man. So, and it's the same with the, um, the pedal that I have at church. I just went and loosened this thing right off. And backed it right up. Not to the point where it was going to fall off, but I have it quite loose, man. So that's the first thing that I did. And again, I like to feel the momentum. I like to feel the swing of that pedal as much as I can. And I found that with a loose spring tension, it just feels better. Now, the second adjustment that I have, if you notice, the, um, the, the angle of my beater, man, is like, like it's sitting way back there. And the reason why I like to have it there, again, it really helps to sort of create the weight that I need to feel when I'm pressing, on, pressing down on that pedal. It just it feels like a slingshot, you know what I mean? And that's kind of what, when I'm playing groove, when I'm laying in the grooves and stuff, that feels cool. Now, another thing that I did to sort of add to that and to help complement that whole theory of the weight thing is I have, a, I have a counterweight. I don't know if you can see it from there, but I have a counterweight here. And with some pedals, you can get it. You, you get one included with the pedal. Um, I think I actually bought this one aftermarket, but it's just a little weight that you can put on the, uh, the beater shaft. And you can adjust it. Let me find a... I can adjust this to sit anywhere along that shaft, right? So I have it sitting way up here because it adds more weight to the top end. So when I swing it, wham, you know what I mean? It just adds that much more weight to the top. So as you can tell by now, I adjust this pedal to complement how I play. So if you're a new drummer or if you're an intermediate drummer, you're in sort of those, you know, third, fourth year stages of playing and, um, and you're curious as to how to adjust your pedal. As far as the spring tension goes, medium tension is the best. In other words, don't even touch it. If you just bought a pedal, it's most likely that whatever tension that thing was set to when you took it out of the box is the right tension. Medium is the best one to start to develop your technique on the pedal, and you should be playing on that medium setting for a long time. Stay away from tightening up that spring. I, I really don't think it's going to help you that much. So yeah, man, medium spring tension, just leave it right there. If your pedal has a beater angle adjustment, then maybe drop it back maybe an inch or so, and then you know just see how that feels. There's probably enough weight on your beater. It's probably going to come with some sort of a plastic beater with a felt front or something like that. There's going to be probably enough weight up there to, you know, to take care of that kind of thing. So leave the spring tension at medium and drop that 
beater back if you have that adjustment on your pedal. Just drop it back to maybe around here and, and just play on it for a little bit and see what it feels like. It's not, it's not going to interfere with, um, with your, your development or anything like that. You're not really going to have to adjust to it too much. It's just going to feel a little bit heavier when you drop it, drop it back a bit, and that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Now, another trick that you can do if you want to add a little bit more weight and you don't actually have a counterweight is to raise it, just move it up a little bit like that. And when you do this, that's sort of the equivalent of holding your stick way back here, right? It just, it's going to feel weightier, if that's a word. Is that a word? Weightier? I don't know. You know what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, like when you, when you move your beater up, it's going to add more weight to the top because you're, it's just going to feel heavier because you're swinging it from way back there. And vice versa, if you want it to feel lighter, let's say you're like a bebop player or something like that, you can drop it, not too severely, but it'll feel lighter if you lower it. And again, lowering it would be the equivalent of choking up on the stick and it's going to feel lighter up here. So, um, you know, if you're playing a smaller bass drum and you're just doing some light kind of bebop stuff, then you can lower the beater a little bit to make it feel a little bit lighter. That's just, I mean, that's a quick temporary adjustment that you can make for whatever setting that you're in. And then you can just put it back to, to where it was. Like it takes like two seconds. Once you decide that you want to start working on playing those fast singles, Take, um, take my humble advice, and if your spring tension is currently at medium, loosen it off, like back it right off. Not, not so that it's lagging, you know what I mean? Like take it to the point where there's actual like slack that you can feel, and then bump it up just until there's no more slack, and that's kind of where you want it to sit, and you're probably, you're probably going to end up leaving it there. My spring now has been super loose for quite a while now. So, yeah, the advantage to that is that it's really going to help you to develop that technique where you're able to play those fast singles. I think it was Dennis Chambers was mentioning Buddy Rich used to practice his singles with no spring on the pedal. So his foot was 100% technique, right? So don't rely on the spring to give you any help when you're developing that kind of thing. Because if the spring is too tight, it's not going to help you at all. You're just going to end up fighting the pedal. Now, I just want to go on record with this, man. Like, I don't have to do this, but I just felt like saying it because I'm such a fan of the pedal. Now, I'm a Yamaha guy, die hard. This pedal is awesome. I'm going to tell you straight up. In my humble opinion, the best pedal in the universe is the Trick Pro 1V. The Trick Pro 1 is the greatest pedal I've ever stuck my shoe on, man. Unbelievable feeling pedal. It's all aluminum. It's the smoothest, quietest pedal I've ever played in my entire life. So shout out to Trick, man. That, that's the Bugatti of pedals as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I couldn't afford it. So I never bought one, but I did kind of have my hands on one for, for a couple of months. And man, yeah, that's just, that's, that's the best pedal I ever played. Anyways, man, that should be enough to chew on. There's really not a whole lot to adjusting your pedal. Keep your adjustments moderate and work on your technique. Technique trumps everything. So make sure you get that tight first and then adjust the pedal to your technique. That is my humble advice as a professional, professional. That's a thing, by the way. And yeah, man, chew on that. Go out, try a couple of pedals, try some adjustments on your own pedal, and, and just see what works. Thanks for watching this video. If you got any comments, just leave them below. And yeah, that's about it for me, man. Peace out, like, subscribe. 
See you next video.